produces results. I'm going to skip down a little bit to this last part here. And I want to say that she um, has a local and a national platform and she supports um, that come from her family. Her supports come from her family and friends who have inspired her and empowered her to to move on into to greater avenues. Thus, um, she is a gifted orator. <laughs> and uh, she has shared the platform, you mind if I tell this? With former presidential candidates and UN ambassadors, ambassadors, from the courthouse to the Capitol Hill, her commitment to public service found its expression while serving as the state director for CWA, and we are so glad to have you tonight. Thank you, awesome thank you, and, Janet. Awesome and dynamic woman of God. Thank you so much. So, I'm happy to be here. Amen, and we're glad to have you. Thank you. Yes, so um, I see her as a chain breaker that God is about to use um, mightily, not just in Lafayette, but through, not just throughout the state of um, Louisiana, but nationally. Um, um, as she step out and do the work that God had, has called her to. And just this past weekend, we had the opportunity um, to go with her to um, Baton Rouge. She spoke at the uh, March for Life. So mm -hmm. would you like to just uh, tell the listening audience sure. a little bit about that? Well, uh, the Louisiana Right to Life has their uh, annual March for Life event. Uh, last weekend it was in Baton Rouge and in Shreveport, and this weekend it will be in Alexandria, Louisiana. So if you have an opportunity, join them there. We are advocating pro-life for the innocent and vulnerable, the unborn. And so that was our participation. That's the role that we undertook because it's personal and uh, it's necessary. It's necessary to use our voice to support righteousness and, and to help prevent the killing of innocent babies. Amen. 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 We really enjoyed that march this weekend. We was out there in the cold and marching. Chilling in yeah. that room, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with our signs and, and the connections that we made, all the different people that we met there was totally awesome. And we look to go um, even the more in connecting with those people and maybe even bringing them here to Lafayette as well. And um, before we go any, for, any further, just give us a little of the history about CWA and what um, was your burden? What caused you to want to step out um, and take on this mandate? Okay. Well, the history of CWA in 1978, it was founded by Mrs. Beverly LaHaye. She heard Gloria Steinem talking on radio uh, while she was living in San Diego, California. And, and the, the Gloria had made a broad statement that she represented or spoke for all of the women in America. And Mrs. LaHaye said, well, she doesn't speak for me. And so she made a few phone calls and she gathered a group of women at her house and they began to pray uh, about local legislation and state legislation in California and in the nation. And at her first event, uh, over several thousand women showed up at her first event that she ever uh, sponsored, and that was the creation of Concerned Women for America. Uh, my participation came because uh, of the call. It wasn't something that I chose, it, it chose me. And uh, my background in, in running for office and and learning some things about public policy. Uh, I've served with CWA as their legislative liaison, as an issues, an abstinence issues expert for several years. And then I became state director in 2007. I did two years, took a sabbatical, and then came back in 2015. And so uh, that coming back in 2015 was a direct result of a prophetic word that was spoken in my life. Um, several years before that. Do you, can I share the story? Yeah, yes, tell us. <laughs> well, uh, back in 2010, um, the women ministries, uh, some women in the women ministry where I was attending church, we went to Houston to attend Women Now Art Loose, and we came back and went on a 40-day prayer fast. Well, one morning, uh, I was up, I had on Cindy Trim, Atomic Prayer, and uh, yeah, yeah, trying to get myself together prepared so that I would have something to contribute, that I would be coherent to contribute to this uh, prayer line. And my then 16-year-old son comes downstairs. He says, Mom, I had a dream that you were pregnant with twins. Well, in the natural, we knew that wasn't possible. That, you know, 
that that couldn't happen in the natural. We weren't going to have a, you know, <laughs> hail Mary, you know, okay. a supernatural experience. But um, I, we, we prayed, he and I, and if I'm not the type of person that goes looking under rocks trying to interpret what God says, if he wants to tell me what he means, he will tell me. And um, later that morning on the prayer call, we were in the war room. That's what my conference call line is called, the war room, before the movie even came right. out. They owe me some money. So <laughs> they... Exactly. We were on the prayer call, and before it ended, a prophetic voice rose and said, Sancha, I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying you're pregnant with twins. One twin is to teach kingdom to government. The other twin is to teach government to kingdom. And so I just kind of dismissed it because I wasn't excited about that at the time. And uh, a few months later, we were in New Orleans at the Love Conference, and Paula White was there, and Juanita Bynum was there, and uh, Bishop uh, Pastor Jamal Bryant was there. And while he was speaking, he stopped in the middle of his sermon, and he says, I don't know who I'm speaking to in here, but one of you is pregnant with twins. One <laughs> twin is to teach kingdom to government, and the other twin is to teach oh, government wow. to kingdom. Well, you know, uh, needless to say, yeah. after running, from the call, yes. here I am. I finally accepted the yes. assignment, and I currently serve as state director. Yes. And I'm I'm humbled and I'm privileged yes. to serve Louisiana families. Yes. Yes, and that that that's totally awesome. I will have to say that I remember when she was carrying the burden, um, quote unquote, mm. to take on this assignment, and um, it didn't come easy. No. <laughs> no. It no. didn't. Because I I, I want to be a peacemaker, you know. And, and sometimes the political arena is very contentious. You know, you've got you know, the Republicans and the Democrats and, you know, mm -hmm. two wings of the same bird sometimes. Mm -hmm. And there's more than one way to skin a cat. So mm -hmm. sometimes you can disagree without being disagreeable. Amen. But oftentimes in that political climate, people, you know, get mean. Right. So I wasn't <clears throat> in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't either. <laughs> I wasn't either because at the time she was telling me, Janet, I don't know the part you're supposed to play in this, but I keep hearing the Lord say, you're supposed to be a part of this. And I'm looking at her like, who? Not me, not, not me, not possibly me. But as time moved on and the more um, we talked about um, this mandate That's and the great. more God dealt with her, I didn't realize he was dealing with me as well. So um, she left a, a, a manual on my table. And I was walked by, it probably laid on my table two weeks. I'm like, okay, if they waiting on me to answer it, it'll never get answered because I never saw myself in that type of arena um, dealing with public policy. So um, one morning I got up to go in my uh, dining room and I picked up the manual. And immediately I looked at this position and I was like, I can do that. And I just felt this passion to want to try it. And so I called her and I said, well, I feel like I can do this one. Mm -hmm. She said, no, that one's already taken. I said, well, okay, <laughs> whatever. And so we went to, and this is something we were about to talk about, is um, the day of EAL, where we go and encourage the legislature. Well, she said, well, come on and go with me to the Capitol. I said, okay, I'll go. And when I got there, needless to say, um, God done a new thing in me. Mm -hmm. He, he really caused me, I didn't need another thing on my plate, no. Not, I didn't, I did not. But I knew God had called me to carry out this assignment. And, and here I am, mm -hmm. you know. Serving as, <laughs> as, as our per action chapter coordinator for the state of Louisiana. And part of Janet's responsibility is to help raise up per action chapters throughout the state. We have six congressional districts. So the strategy that the Lord's identified for us is um, to try to raise up a minimum of two per action chapters per legislative congressional district. So that would give our state 12. Well, we've got two in operation that are active in the Lafayette, the third congressional district, and we're raising up one right now that we're soon to launch in the fifth congressional district, which is the Opelousas, Ville Platte, you know, Eunice area. And so um, we're interested in, you know, meeting people that are interested in praying and acting. And being a prayer action chapter leader is not difficult. It's, it's just not difficult, but there has to be a, a commitment to it. And you have to, for me as a state director, in, in vetting out those eligible mm -hmm. candidates who want to serve, 
um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> as per action chapter leader, uh, once you see what the job requirements are, you know, and you have to ask the Lord two questions. Is this my season and is this my portion? We want it to be a win-win. We don't want you to give all your strength and your resource and your time and your energy to CWA and then you leave and, and not be fulfilled. This is not about having bragging rights. This is about, this is about advancing the kingdom. Amen. And so it's a very critical role, but when you have the grace, when you know that you're walking mm -hmm. in your purpose, his grace is sufficient for you, and it's not heavy lift, lift, lifting. It's not toilsome. No. You know, a labor of love, perhaps, but not toilsome. And so we welcome uh, any lady or, you know, any woman that mm -hmm. would be interested in leading a prayer action mm -hmm. chapter in her home or in her church. Mm -hmm. Please give us a call. Visit mm -hmm. our website so you can learn more about who we are and our mm -hmm. seven core values. Mm -hmm. um, we, what we didn't cover, Janet, if I may, is, is let your audience know uh, what CWA stands for, uh, our seven core values. We strongly advocate and support the sanctity for human life, education, defense of family, religious liberty, national sovereignty, sexual exploitation, and support for Israel. And we, we stake those stands based on mm -hmm. our biblical worldview. And my job as state director is to help influence public policy from city ordinances to state and, and mm -hmm. national legislation with our biblical worldview because we know that righteousness, that the government is established upon his shoulders. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we, our motto, mm -hmm. I'm proud to say, <laughs> here in Louisiana is she speaks. She speaks truth to power. She speaks the truth in love, and she speaks life, because the power of life and death is on the tongue, like Pastor Charles shared with us earlier, mm -hmm. powerful. And so um, oftentimes I encourage uh, women that I meet, uh, some, uh, I tell them, you can't curse your leadership and expect your nation to be blessed. Amen. If you don't pray about it, you have no say about it. We're instructed in 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4, to pray for those in authority over us that we may live quiet and peaceable mm -hmm. lives. We have the power in our tongues to turn this thing around. The, mm -hmm. the tongue is like a rudder. It, it can turn the ship. And so part of mm -hmm. our responsibility as Concerned Women mm -hmm. for America is to pray for our legislators, mm -hmm. encourage them through our mm -hmm. Encourage a Legislator program. Uh, we, our ladies adopt a legislator and send them postcards throughout the legislative session. Mm -hmm. Um, informing them, letting them know that we're praying for them. It's not a lobbying mm -hmm. effort. It's simply to pray and encourage our legislators. Mm -hmm. Just this year, we've added the Mighty Nine. And so the Mighty Nine includes our governor, our two federal senators, and our six U.S. representatives. And so we'll be sending them encouragement throughout the year as they serve. And, and this will help them govern mm -hmm. properly and, and fear the Lord and do good. And amen. And <laughs> amen. 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 You know what? When you you were speaking, I was thinking about um, we are the world's, the nation's largest um, women organization. On, public policy on public women's policy. organization. Yes. We are, the, we are the largest one. In the nation. In we the nation. Mm -hmm. So we are saying, Louisiana, we are coming at you. <laughs> um, we are, are targeting uh, because it's a... Um, a passion for me for to get the pastor's wives or, the, or the, whoever the, the the churches because we're the body of Christ to hear to, to hear the sound the cry that's needed for us to come in agreement um, as one as that same voice and, and 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 be a voice that can change what's happening because we have children. That's right. We have grandchildren. Look at Common Core. Yeah. Common That's Core came through the back door on us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there were some concessions made and uh that's that would take a show probably by itself to yeah. explain the various nuances of it. But um I'm glad you brought that up because that's part of what we do at Concerned Women for America in teaching kingdom to government. We want to use our voice to influence the public policy and, and talk with our legislators in a respectful tone, yes. you know, because speaking the truth and love, mm -hmm. your tone matters. You'll get further faster, I promise mm -hmm. you, than being divisive and agitated and, you know, yes. uh, contentious. That, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And um, we're women. 
So we use amen. our powers for good. Influence. <laughs> and then the kingdom, influence. yes, amen. And then in teaching government to kingdom, because the body of Christ, that's our target demographic. Mm -hmm. We're not taking this message to the world, although they may hear it, mm -hmm. And they're welcome, you know, to, to look at who we are and come alongside. Mm -hmm. And if they find like faith, mm -hmm. like value, you know, mm -hmm. come alongside and serve. But my target audience, our target audience is the kingdom. And, and teaching believers, the government to kingdom facet of the mandate is to teach protocol, to teach how to address uh, legislators and and teach the body of Christ how to engage, what's the proper protocol, what's the proper decorum, and uh, how to legislate or how to lobby from your laptop, mm -hmm. you know, and, and how to engage the political arena and learn what those processes are. And it's not a lot, but we want to keep the kingdom of God mm -hmm. informed mm -hmm. about what vital legislation is coming to Louisiana and mm -hmm. affecting our families and affecting our nation that are uh, built around our, our core values. Mm -hmm. Again, the sanctity of human life, education, defense of family, sexual exploitation, religious liberty, mm -hmm. national sovereignty, and support for Israel. And from the local level, here in Lafayette, I-10 has been deemed the largest human trafficking uh, highway in the country, I, and dare I say sure. the world. There's a lot of human trafficking and sexual exploitation that's coming right through our corridor, past our homes mm -hmm. and our businesses that we need to speak to. When there's a business that's trying to bring in illicit uh, businesses like, you know, strip clubs or whatever, you have a right to speak, to call your parish, you that's know, right. and your city, mm -hmm. yeah, your city officials and, and tell them no and show up at the, you're going to have to be proactive. Mm -hmm. You can no longer just curse the darkness. Mm -hmm. you know but to, mm -hmm. but you need to light a candle mm -hmm. curse it if you mm -hmm. must mm -hmm. but light a candle be proactive and, mm -hmm. and take a stand and I'm sorry yes. that's one thing that we we are about to start doing um, with CWA here locally is getting involved with the um, Board of Education those meetings as well as the city council meetings. So you will start seeing some of us show up at those meetings. And before we get away from Common Core, I want to say, because I was blown away when I found this out, even our children that's in private schools are being affected mm -hmm. by Common Core. And we think we have them in, in a different type of place, um, uh, a learning environment, but it's touching every area and it's simply because I believe a lot of this have taken place simply because we have not come together as the body of Christ and cut it off at the root if you say you believe in prayer you know this is this this is this would be an awesome opportunity in other words, don't miss this mm -hmm. opportunity. And before it's time, we have so much we need to talk about. <laughs> I told you we should have took the whole hour. But anyway, <laughs> she'll be back, okay? <laughs> she'll be back. But I wanted to say this before we, we actually closed, was that um, religious liberty mm -hmm. in our schools. Touch on that just for one second, because so many of our children are still not knowing. They're still yeah. thinking they can't. Uh, yeah. They don't have any right in school when it comes right. to what they believe. Right. So just touch on that a little they bit. They don't check their First Amendment rights at the door of the schoolhouse. What the law says is that as long they can share religious material, they can wear Christian jewelry, they can have self-expression. You know, I know that we have uniforms here, but they can wear Christian jewelry. What they may not do is during classroom instruction time is to pass out tracks or, you know, uh, pass out, you know, things that are would create a distraction. Okay, so they can pray in school. They can even use the Bible as a textbook. Mm -hmm. This is true. They can use the Bible as a textbook, and they can pray in the halls. They can pray anywhere on campus, but not in the classroom uh, to be a distraction from what the, the lesson is. Okay, if it's tied to the lesson, then they may share it. Uh, also, um, <clears throat> also, they may, uh, they may, as long as it's student-led and student-initiated, they may pray on campus and at school events. Again, it has to be student-led and student-initiated, okay? So our children do have rights. If you want to learn more about religious liberty and religious freedom, please visit our website at www.cwfa.org. 
or la.org. And you can contact Sancha for more information at at director at louisiana.cwfa.org. That's director at louisiana, spelled out, dot cwfa.org. I look forward to hearing number. from you. Your cell phone oh, number. Oh, 337-308-8696. 337-308-8696. All right, ladies. We're coming at y'all. <laughs> God bless. <laughs>